a very brief uh, description of SymPy and Python now that you have it installed. If you'd like to produce the code along with me, I'll have it on my website and, um, and you can also see it here. So I have opened a, uh, uh, the editor to a file that I've saved, but you can type this directly if you like. Uh, so just type or paste it straight into the editor. And uh, I always start with import SymPy as SP. And I do that because I need to have access to the SymPy module. There are some things that you can get from Python without the SymPy module, but many of the ones that I want to use are in it. So I have to import it. And I want to give it a short name so that whenever I call on it, I don't have to type too much. And so I import it as SP. So that gives it the name SP. So that's line one. Line three has a hash symbol starting it off. That means that it's a comment. Uh, therefore, the computer is not going to run this line of code. This gives me the ability to just write something to you as a note. Uh, the next line creates variables. So uh, really, we should start reading it right here, where I use SymPy to declare a collection of variables, which, you know, th this is it called the symbols function located inside of SymPy. And this function, you have to tell it the letters that you want the program to regard as if they're variables. Um, and so I, I want to use X, Y, and Z as my variables. You have to write in between these quote marks, the letters, uh, whichever ones you want, separated by spaces. It has to be entered in that format for SymPy to know what you're talking about. And uh, this equation, or uh, equal sign, is used to store information in Python. And so uh, I store these variables as X, Y, and Z. It's a little bit difficult to explain exactly why I have X, Y, and Z over here and over here, but just know that this is the syntax for how you create variables. And so now I have X, Y, and Z as variables. Now, if I run this, nothing will actually happen, right? You see down here in the console that nothing really happened because I didn't tell it to print anything. So here on this line, I'll uncomment the code and on line seven, I'll just print X times Y. And there you see it now printed something. I would like to use the SymPy pretty print function, or what I could even just write as pprint. And this will just make it look a little bit nicer, right? Rather than the star, it writes it as a dot symbol, which is more recognizable as multiplication. Uh, notice that the way you do a square, how you square something in Python, is to use the double star operator. The caret symbol that you might be familiar with how to use or, or writing uh, uh, exponents does not actually work the way that you expect it to. It means something else in Python. So if you want to get uh, x squared, you would have to write this. And if we go ahead and run this, you see that the regular print version of it looks like that. The pretty print version tries to make it look how you would handwrite it. Now, uh, the next thing that I'll show you is creating and storing a function. So let's say that I have the function f of x equals uh, x squared minus 2x plus 1. I would write that and store it as f. Now, technically, I could call this anything I want. This is just a name for storage. But of course, it makes a lot of good sense to store it under the name f. Uh, but I could have called it G, I could have called it function, right? If I call this function, that'll still work. Um, and now I haven't told it to print anything yet. So of course, down here, it doesn't print anything, but I'm allowed to do this. But I'd just rather call it F. Now, having defined F, I can pretty print it. And again, this really could just be done as P print. And if I P print it, it looks almost how you'd handwrite it. Um, I can also evaluate functions. So here I will just print this text just so that when it prints to the console, you can kind of keep track of, of what you're seeing and why you're seeing it. You'll, you'll know that initially it'll 
it'll print that text evaluate at x equals 2 because of this line and below it I will print the value now of course if you plugged in x is equal to 2 into this function f of x you would get 2 squared which is 4 minus 2 times 2 which is 4 so that's 4 minus 4 is 0 plus 1 so the value is 1 and that's what SymPy has told us um, now I'll just print an empty space with line 27 just to give me a little separator I will print that string and then I'll show you that SymPy knows how to factor a function so you should know algebra enough to understand that this function when factored produces this and you could even confirm it by multiplying this and uh, if you multiplied this back out, some people uh, who do not know their algebra very well would say that multiplying this back out, you'd get x squared minus 1. That's not correct. And if you think that, you need to bone up your algebra skills before moving on to calculus. So that's just a little uh, warning or statement about uh, you know where your, uh, your algebra skills need to be in order to do calculus. Um, now I will show you. Uh, that SymPy can plot functions. So I'll print another space. I will also print the text telling you that I'm plotting. And then I'll actually have SymPy plot the function x. And there it is. That's the function, or sorry, the function f of x. The last thing that I'll do is I'll show you that SymPy knows how to solve equations. But in order to do that, uh, you have to store the equation. So I'm going to have SymPy solve f of x equals 0, where, again, I'm still using this as f of x. Uh, first, I have to store the equation. So I use sp.equation to get the equation builder uh, function out of SymPy. And the left-hand side, I'll say, is f. And the right-hand side is 0. So this is setting f of x equal to 0. And I'm saving that equation as the variable equation, right? I'm, I'm calling it equation. Now, down in this line, if you look first here, I am having SymPy solve that equation. Now, to print it out, uh, I could just print it out, but I want to print it out with some additional text to help you know, keep track of what's going on. So uh, I want to put, I want to turn the solution into a bit of text so that I can combine text with text and print that whole thing out. Uh, if that's a little too technical, don't worry about it, but the main point is I'm solving the equation, and you use this to solve the equation. And I'm, you, the rest of this is really just so that I can put things as strings, and that's just a little bit easier to print out. So here you go. I uh, solve for f of x equals 0 by creating the equation and down here you see that the solution is one uh, don't worry about the square brackets but the solution is one and if you come back up to the function yeah when x is equal to one this becomes zero right you can see that by plugging in or you can see it in the graph where if x is equal to one then y is equal to zero so yes one is the solution to that equation. And this is the intro to SymPy. Uh, like I said, uh, I'll be using it throughout, and you may want to program at, you know, with me using a code like the code that I produce, but it's not strictly necessary. Uh, you could just sort of watch me use it to solve things and graph things, and that's really all that's absolutely necessary.